everyone. Welcome to Earth Tones. I wanted to jump on here today and record a quick episode on a couple of things I've been diving into lately. One thing is the concept of the word normal and what's normal. So collectively, I think we're all realizing that there's no such thing as normal anymore. So if we aren't trying to fit in, what are we going to do? So I would say those things that you always wanted to do, those things you always wanted to study or rekindle an interest in that you maybe had as a child before you got so busy trying to be normal that you didn't have time to do something fun. So I want to dig into um, the topic of the moon cycle today and also my thoughts on music and the elements and zodiac signs. So I'm not an astrologer. I just love the topic and um, wanted to share with with my audience some things I've been diving into. If it helps you in some way, great, but it's really just for fun and to make your ride to work or whatever you're doing a little more fun. So yeah, here it is. Today is February 16th and tonight, today is a full moon I just started using the moon phases to track my creative journey. The moon phases bring balance and harmony to creative projects and other areas of your life. The moon is located 238,900 miles away, and yet it seems to affect us so much. Its gravitational pull affects the rise and fall of the ocean through the tides, and also affects our moods and emotions. Look up at the sky with your naked eye and see the magnificent moon. No telescope is needed. So every night for the past few years during COVID times, I would take a break from working late at my music studio and walk outside and look up at the vast sky and all of the stars and constellations. I noticed how the moon would change right in front of my eyes through the phases night after night. I began to read up on the traditions of following the moon cycle. So since 2020, I rekindled my interest in astrology and astronomy and began reading books and studying. I studied my chart and how to read others' charts and started relating it to music. I had a few readings with master astrologers online with over 20 years experience reading the stars and people's charts. So you can track the zodiac signs through the moon cycles and notice an energy shift. When the moon moves into the zone of sky of which is your sun sign, mine is Capricorn, that is a very powerful time to get things done. And if your moon sign is in the opposite sign of your sun, for me that's Cancer, I may feel some type of pull in my life, like I have to address something. So the great thing about the moon is it's a good introductory, I think, to the energy of the planets. So you may not feel completely connected to the other planets, like Mercury or Venus, but we can look right up at the sky and simply see the moon right there. So technically the moon is a satellite planet, It's like a guidance system and helps to manifest the things we want. Here's how you can use the moon's phases as signs to tell us how to align creative projects or goals with the phases of the moon. So there's eight moon phases. I'm sure this is familiar to a lot of people, but I'm just going to dig right in. And the first one being the new moon. So we cannot see the moon when it is a new moon. There is no light of its own, so it gets its light from the sun. Astrologically, the new moon happens when it reaches the same sign and degree that the sun is in. So without light from the moon, we look in and decide what we want to focus on our energy on. The new moon is a time to get back in touch with dreams, wishes, and plant seeds. It could be a time to get in touch with a feeling or a problem to overcome. What do you want to bring into your life? The new moon is a time to check in with yourself. As the moon's light grows, so does our intention. A slither of silver light 
turns to a bigger slither of light as our intentions grow. So the next phase is the waxing crescent. And this lasts about a week. So in the northern hemisphere, we see the waxing crescent phase as a thin crescent of light on the right. And I like to think of this as like a planning and research phase. So the details may not be clear at first, so you'll spend time exploring as the, ga- as the days go by to get more clear. Which brings us to the first quarter. So we see the first quarter f- phase as a half a moon. This phase only lasts one day. One whole week after the new moon, the moon becomes a half moon. This is the first quarter moon, which is a quarter way through the moon's cycle. So I I like to think of this as go time. You're ready to act, ready to take action and make a move forward. So you may announce something or you may hire someone kind of stepping into something. It's kind of like a step. It's a point where there's no return. Which brings us into the waxing gibbous phase, which lasts one week. So this is the busiest week in the moon cycle because we are actively engaged in our creative goals. The phase is between a half moon and full moon, so emotional energy rises to the surface as more and more light lights up the moon during this week. We have more energy, more passion, as we are in kind of hustle mode. So we are actively engaging in what our present goals are. So two weeks after the new moon, we now reach the full moon. So the full moon can last anywhere from one to three days. We can see the moon completely illuminated during full moons, unless there's like too much cloud cover. So as the moon becomes fully illuminated, it's like we are wearing our heart on our sleeves an intense time of facing the truth about ourselves and others and about our goals. We may have forgotten to do something and gotten off balance and have lessons to learn, or it can be a time of major celebration, like you just finished a great project. It could be a major realization of something. A lot of great parties happen during the full moon. It is also a time to invite success into your life for all your hard work. Sometimes it can be a combination of lessons and blessings. It can be a time of releasing something. During the full moon, we may need to release something, otherwise we can hold tension and emotional energy that has been rising up in us, just like the rising of the tide. Full moon ritual. So there is a full moon ritual where you can write a list on a piece of paper of things you want to let go. And in order to move on, you basically just burn it under the full moon. This can be very helpful if you're going through an especially intense time and the lessons are very tough. This begins the process of honoring and releasing your emotions. So after the full moon, we enter the waning gibbous phase. In this phase, the moon begins waning, which means it's getting smaller. We're moving forward from the lessons we've learned or we're sharing with others and enjoying the fruits of our labor. Contemplation of direction on where to move in the future and what needs to shift is the focus here. Then we go to the last quarter moon. This phase is also referred to as the third quarter moon. It's an action phase, or it's kind of a time for letting go of whatever is no longer serving you. You may physically be releasing something that no longer works for you, Maybe you want to close out a project you're working on or moving on from a goal. It's a time for deciding what feels heavy and deciding what to let go of, even if you don't feel ready. Then this brings us into the last phase, the waning crescent phase. This is the last week of the moon cycle. Reflection and release and fully letting go is the focus here. So... In the northern hemisphere, we see the waning crescent phase as a thin crescent of light on the left. We're learning, although we're tying up loose ends, and in general, we're feeling, we're feeling like less busy, so we can make space for what's coming up next. 
So as the moon's light fades, so does our energy. Allow your mind to wander and brainstorm ideas that you may want to start for the next new moon. So that's the complete moon cycle. Around and around we go. The moon cycle is basically um, once a month, and you can also kind of link them together for bigger projects. What I love about the moon cycle is it shows us that there's a time to work hard and then a time to rest and kind of receive and uh, slow down and let go. It's kind of like this dance between the sun and the moon. All you have to do is look up at the moon to see what phases it is in, and you can align the moon cycles with your creative journey. Be in tune with the moon. So the energy of the moon symbolizes our energy. When there's less light coming from the moon, we can feel less energy. But when the moon is bright and lights up the world at night, we are more alert and awake and may even have trouble sleeping. It's nice to know that the moon's phases are offering energies that we can work with to bring our own lives better into balance. Don't give up on yourself during those times when you need to preserve your energy. Take some time tonight to look up at the moon and see what phase it's in and see where you're in in your creative journey. I'll leave a link in the show notes where you can check the moon phases. Sometimes factors can influence music that you may not have thought about. For instance, the four elements and what they say about your relationship to music. So the element of fire, we think of big energy, attitude, quick energy, maybe rock music or heavy metal. And air, the element of air, maybe we think about communication, amazing lyrics, or electronic music, or something that's techno or technology-based. Air is an element that appreciates intellectual pursuits, maybe new trends in music. And water, the element of water, when you think watery, you think emotion, depth, feelings. And then we have the element of earth, which may be groove or some type of repeated rhythm or pattern that adds foundation. So sometimes we may gravitate towards one element of music more than another. And remember, I'm talking about the elements of the world, not of music elements. And if you're feeling like you want to change or that you want to broaden your views, you may think, what's my missing element? Which elements are predominant in my music or my approach to music? Well, thank you for spending a few moments with me today. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Earth Tones. If you are interested in bass lessons or performance inquiries for my group, please check out the show notes where you can contact me. Have a great week. Thank you again for tuning into Earth Tones. See you next time. Bye-bye.